Good morning, everybody. Oh, wait a minute. Hello. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Is it on? All right. Did you, did you guys? Oh, oh, there. Now I hear me. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Um, I've been gone for a couple of weeks, and Chuck's been gone for a month. And so we're so happy to be with you this morning and um, seeing all your familiar faces and some that uh, we don't see very often. Marquita and Hope are back there in the back, and so we're glad they're here with us today. Um, you are in for a, a treat today because uh, Jake is going to be filling the pulpit today, and uh, so we're anxious to, to uh, hear him and hear him, uh, what the Lord has put on his heart for us this morning. And um, so I'm glad you're here, and I hope that you uh, have come with your hearts prepared to receive whatever it is the Lord has for us today. So um, I ha we had a really bad problem up here this morning. We ran out of microphones. <laughs> so what a problem to have, right? That's a great Amen. problem. And so, um, as you notice, we've kind of grown, and so that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And um, so, let's start out with uh, singing, worshiping the Lord this morning, and then Jake is going to come and, and bring the word to us. So, let's, let's sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Stand if you'd like. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free with the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine. Father's glory, bless. 
and I was thinking as we were singing that, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> my voice is not so good this morning, that here we are in an election year, right? And it's starting to heat up. And things are starting to happen. The campaign is starting to go. And I'm thinking, shine, Jesus, shine. You know, fill our land with your grace. What does it say? Fill our land with the Father's glory. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a candidate that we knew was going to bring God's glory back to America? Wouldn't that be wonderful? That'd be a no-brainer, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd know exactly who to vote for. So, but you know what? We have to keep praying for our nation. We cannot give up. And as we just celebrated the 4th of July on our nation's birthday, per se, more than ever, we need to be praying for our land. And I think of the song that we have sung before, too. If my people would humble themselves and pray, then I would come and heal their land. So that's us. So we need to be making sure that we're praying for our nation. Yeah. Okay, let's sing As the Deer. Amen. I love nature. I love to see the deer. I love that. And they come to our yard sometimes, you know, or you'll see them out in our fields and things. Don't you know that the Lord loves them too? And he loves us. So we need, I always say, Chuck and I always say, nature has no problem with knowing who the creator is. You know, they don't struggle with that. They know. And they do their thing. We need to sometimes be that simple-minded, right? And follow their lead. Let's see. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are the 
standing. I'm going to switch it up a little bit on us, guys. And let's sing in moments like these. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. And we worship. The altars are open. There is much to pray for. Amen. There is much to be thankful for. The fact that we woke up this morning. And as we get older, we think we're more thankful for that every day. Or we, <laughs> hey, we woke up again. What is it, Lord, that you have for me today? What do you need me to do? I've got one more day to serve. One more day to fill somebody's life with some joy. How many times have you been to the grocery store or Walmart or someplace like that and people just look so sad? Give them a smile. Give them some joy. They might need it. Come as we sing if you'd like. In moments like these I see Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be able to come together and to meet like this in moments like these and to worship you as the almighty God. We know Father, that this is not necessarily a popular position today, but Lord, we publicly declare that you are our God and we are your people. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, 
whose blood was shed, that we might all be free of guilt, and we might be free of anxiety, and we might be free of fear, and we might be able to live lives of peace and joy, which is in such short commodity in our world. And as Ruth has mentioned, we, we encounter people each and every day, Lord, that just seem so down and so discouraged and so burdened. And the enemy just seems to have nearly free reign. And so, Lord, we pray that, that we here at Glenview might be a light on a hill. We, we can do something, Lord. You've put us here for a reason. We're all here today for a reason. There's nothing happenstance about these things. There's no such thing as coincidence. But, Lord, we know that you direct and oversee everything that is done. How does that work? We don't know. But we believe that it's true. And we've seen evidence of that truth. We pray this morning, Lord, that as this, uh, the people that are here, those maybe that are watching online, some came in with light hearts and they're on top of the mountain. It's a great day. And there's a lightness to their step. There's probably others that have come in today and if we had eyes to see it, they were probably dragging many things behind them. Maybe they barely made it in the door. Many burdens, many concerns. And so, Lord, today I pray that you would meet every need. And I pray that at least for this time, Lord, together, those things may be set aside and we can enjoy your presence and we can get renewed with your strength. And our batteries can be recharged. We just uh, praise and worship you today as the Lord of all things. I pray for Jake this morning, Lord, that you would bless him. And that you would give him a, a holy unction today, Lord. And, and that we wouldn't hear Jake, but we would hear you through Jake this morning. And whatever it is you've laid on his heart for our hearing today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for what you've done in the past. We thank you for what you're doing today. And we thank you for what you're going to do in the future. And we rest in the fact that everything is in your hands. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Like, everybody, like Ruth said, we are grateful for this day to be able to get up and celebrate God in this house of worship. We have the freedom to come here and do that. Not everybody has that freedom. But I also want to stress that we did celebrate the 4th of July, this wonderful birth of our nation. But then I also want to wish my dad a happy 90th birthday coming up on Tuesday. Alright. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Charlie. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Yay. 90 years young. Awesome. I love it. I love that. And you know what? He's going to be like Winston Churchill said, never, never give up. Right, Charlie? <laughs> let's, let's sing an old hymn that I love, Living by Faith. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all Above. Trusting, confiding in his great love. I'm safe from all harm in his sheltering. 
Master looks on at the strife, living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. Amen, aren't you glad? I'm safe from all harm in his sheltering arms. Wanda and I are going to sing a song this morning. We've been practicing on karaoke at home, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a, we enjoy singing it together, so we just want to share it with you guys. to break declaring there is hope with there is freedom I speak Jesus cause your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like 
like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus for my family, I 
I'm probably going to move the stage around just a little bit. Uh, I know Pastor Bob sits down, but I don't know if I can sit down while I preach, so I'm going to stand. And give me just a second. So I'll just move the microphone over here. That'll work. Can everybody hear me? Okay. I'll put this one back here. So, well, I'm going to start off by saying congratulations to Charlie. It's Tuesday, 90th birthday. And if you talk to him, he'll probably tell you it's from good clean living. Isn't that right, Charlie? Okay. So before I get started, uh, I'm going to give you a little pre-sermon. So yesterday, uh, we had a district assembly up in Decatur, Illinois, and when we got home, somebody had decided, had tried to assassinate President Trump. So but I want you guys to know that God is sovereign and he is in charge. Right. And we have all these things happening in our world that seem crazy and outrageous. But he is sovereign. He's in charge. And we do not have anything to worry about. Uh, Luke chapter 17, verses 26. Uh, it says, as in the days of Noah, so will be the son of man. Well, what were the days of Noah like? Well, you have to go back and read Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. And it says the earth was corrupt and full of violence. Okay, and God had regretted that he had made mankind. So if you just watch the news and get caught up in all the stuff going on, you know, this world is full of violence. It's full of corruption. But God is sovereign. He's coming back. He is our king. And... We're going to come out on top. We don't have anything to worry about. So just take that to heart. That's a good thing, Jesus, coming back. A lot of Christians, it kind of scares them, or they're afraid of that. They don't like to talk about it. But the return of Jesus Christ, our King, is a good thing. That's our blessed hope, our glory. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, uh, welcome to sermon number five. This is my fifth sermon. Uh, Actually, this is the first time I ever sang in church today, so right. thank you for that opportunity. My wife's a great singer. I just try to follow along. So, But anyway, sermon number five. Now, I have preached here before uh, in, with Pastor Bob in the District Training Center in our, our class. I've been here, and I preached here my first sermon here, and I think Greg and Marcy were here doing the sound. So this is actually the second time I preached here, but this is a... My fifth sermon overall. So, before I was sanctified, I used to watch professional wrestling. Anybody ever watch professional wrestling? Okay, what's, what's your favorite wrestler, sir? Oh, probably Dick the Bruiser. Dick the Bruiser, okay. Over here? Ric Flair? Okay, anybody else? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, okay. So those are some of the greats. Junkyard Dog. Junkyard Dog, okay. So, I'm glad I'm not alone in watching professional wrestling. Now... I was kind of joking there. I still go on YouTube and watch some of the great highlights over the years, but I don't really watch any current wrestling too much. So anyway, uh, there was a wrestler named The Rock, whose real name is Dwayne Johnson. Has anybody ever heard of him? The Rock Dwayne Johnson. Okay. When The Rock would wrestle at an arena and then later on return to that same venue, uh, he would come out and say, finally, it's good to come back home to Orlando, Florida. And, you know, I can kind of relate to what The Rock was saying because one of I have been attending here once a month since January. And when, when we come back here, I can truly say, finally, it's good to come back home to the Glenview Church of the Nazarene. So, 
you know, it's been a couple of very busy weeks for Wanda and I. Uh, we just got done with district assembly this weekend, and then prior to that, we had just got back from Camp Table Rock in Missouri, and we took 15 kids from our church to Camp Table Rock. Now, Camp Table Rock, his motto is you have to disconnect in order to connect to God, okay? That's their camp motto. And, you know, that's very, very good advice for us adults also. I, all around the place. I mean, yesterday when I was watching what happened to President Trump, everybody's out, got their phones out doing this. And, you know, I just thought, man, that's that's crazy. But trying to get a video or whatever, but I just, at work, people used to talk in the break room and visit where I work at and, you know, have fellowship. And now you go to the break room, it's this. No one's talking. They're just doing this. These are adults, so. Uh, but uh, there's something, you know, at Camp Table Rock was amazing to watch these teenagers connect to God whenever they got away from their electronics. Uh, this generation, there is a lot of hope. Uh, God made a real big difference in our life at church camp, and I would like to encourage this church, if you have kids that you can send to church camp, Please do that because it is life changing. And I'm going to use my son Silas, for example. He told me I could. Uh, you know, he plays a lot of video games just like any other kid and different things. But when he got from camp, back from camp, Silas took a chair and a table out underneath a maple tree on our farm and set it up right next to the bean field. And he's been having devotions there about every morning. I think he switched from the maple tree now to the hammock that's out in the front yard. Now, if I was to go to have a devotion with God in a hammock, I'd probably fall asleep. So he's a lot stronger than I am. So anyway, it was, just, it was awesome to see, you know, Silas come back with a hunger and a thirst for getting to know God and setting down his phone, setting down his video games, and spending time with the Lord. So church camp kind of leads into what I'll be talking about today. Uh, since we've been coming here for six or seven months, I thought it'd be good to get to know each other Today, so I'm going to share my testimony with you. Uh, I grew up in rural Tower Hill, Illinois. How many of you know where Tower Hill is? Anyone? Hannah does. Oh, back there. Okay. So Tower Hill is on Route 16. You have Pena here, you have Shelbyville here, and you have Tower Hill right in between it. Town of about 500 people. It used to be 700, but we shrank a little. Okay, so I went to Tower Hill schools and attended the Tower Hill Christian Church. Now, every summer, the Tower Hill Christian Church would send us to a week of church camp at Bond Christian Service Camp in Mulberry Grove, Illinois. Anybody know where Mulberry Grove is? A few more hands. Okay, if you don't, it's right here on I-70 in between Vandalia and Greenville. Okay, so... While at camp during an evening service, I was around nine years old, I went forward to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, what made that experience special is my cousin Tanya and I went to get forward together to receive Jesus into our lives. And I can remember Tanya and I hugging each other, and both of us had tears rolling down our eyes. Now, these were not tears because we were sad. They were tears of joy because Jesus Christ was my now my Lord and Savior. Can anybody relate to that? Tears of joy. So then on the last day of camp, the camp director, Dallas Nichols, baptized me in the uh, lake. And uh, so church campus has always had a special place in my heart. I've been fortunate enough to be a camp counselor multiple times throughout the years as my kids were growing up. And the most recent, just a couple weeks ago at Camp Table Rock. Excuse me. So... I was only nine years old when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, okay? And for just a moment, I'd like to take just a minute and have the kids in service stand up. I have something very important to say to you. So if you're a kid here today in service, would you could you stand up for just a minute? Oh, they're downstairs. Silas, you're still a kid. Chuck, yeah. Okay, I see a couple in the back. It's good to have you guys here. Oh, okay, so... Uh, this is what I'd like to say to the kids that are in service today is, uh, you know, 
commit your life to Jesus Christ while you're young. Jesus will never leave you. He will always be there, and he will keep a lot of bad things out of your life if you will follow him. Right. Amen. Uh, I know that's how it went for me. God protected me from a lot of things, and I know he'll do the same for you if you'll just serve him and follow him. Okay. So because I was young when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, as I got older into my teenage years, I went backwards in my walk with God. I don't think that's uncommon. But when I, at nine years old, I was not innocent because the Bible says we were born into sin. But most nine-year-old children haven't committed a great deal of sin or face some of the struggles you face as an adolescent. So teenage years, I went backwards a little bit. So as I grew up in Tower Hill, my time was winding down at Tower Hill High School. I was not sure what I wanted to do with my life after I graduated. One thing that appealed to me growing up was being a soldier in the United States Army. So that's what I did. I joined the Army. My dad was drafted during the Vietnam era. We had World War II vets in my family, some great uncles. We had Korean War vets, and I was always, you know, proud of the soldiers in our family and proud of our country. So I joined the Army, you know, and this is not something I really uh, prayed about. This is just something I decided to do. And as I get older and look back upon that decision, uh, I can see how guide, God was guiding my path the whole way. At the time, I didn't realize it. Realize it. it was just kind of a decision I made. Didn't really seek God about it, but I can see that he was guiding my path the whole way. So moving forward, I got out of basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and I was sent to my permanent duty station at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. Now, one of the first things that happened to me when I got to Fort Bliss was a God thing. Uh, my buddies and I went to the bowling alley on base, and some of my and we went bowling. And I met someone who invited me to a church called Abundant Church. Now, I had got there, and I was planning on trying to attend a church. And I said, "Well, you know what? I'm going to give Abundant Church a try." So that following Sunday. I called a cab and headed to Abundant Church. Now, the cab ride was interesting. Number one, it was the first time I'd ever ridden in a cab. Okay? You know, we don't have a lot of cabs in Tower Hill. As a matter of fact, I can safely say we have no cabs. Okay? So, anyway, the cab driver and I struck up a conversation about going to church, and he proceeded to tell me he believed in the Aztec sun god. So, you know, I tried to be respectful to the cab driver, but I remember thinking to myself that this guy is, whew, you know, out there. So I got to Abundant Church, and it was a little further away from base than I realized, and my cab fare was $21. I paid the cab driver, and then I got out and realized I probably don't have enough money to get back to, to, to base. So I thought, well, God will take care of me, and he did. So... uh. I went in, and the people at the Abundant Church were some of the nicest and most friendly people I'd ever met. And, you know, that meant a lot for a lonely soldier far from home to feel welcome, and they really felt, made me feel welcome, okay? Now, there's an object lesson right there. How you treat people matters. How you treat people matters. If I'd been greeted by a couple old sore heads and grumps, I would have never stepped foot in that church again. And something we need to remember is when we have new people come through our doors, we need to, you know, we need to be friendly. We need to be kind and loving. And I will say that this church does a great job of that. I've only been going here a few months, and this is probably rates right up there with Abundant Church as far as how kind and good and friendly you people have been. So keep up the good work. So good job. Anyway, and... As I'll tell the rest of the story, as uh, what is it, Paul Harvey? Uh, the rest of the story is that somebody in church offered me a ride back to base, and I didn't have to hitchhike or walk. So that was good. Now, Abundant Church was way, way different than any other church I'd ever attended. Okay, Abundant Church was a non denominational, charismatic church that believed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I was not sure about speaking in tongues, 
and what the church believed, but I was drawn to the church by something deep inside of me I now know was the Holy Spirit. And, you know, uh, over the next several months, I continued to attend Abundant Church when I was not on duty or out in the field doing training or maneuvers. I was also able to purchase my own set of wheels. I bought a brand new four-wheel drive Chevy S10 with a 4.3 liter V6. It was a very nice truck. No more cab rides. And it's the only new vehicle I've ever owned. So, uh, so the next part of my testimony is how I met Wanda. Now to my kids, Josh, Jared, Hannah, and Silas, who are tired of hearing this story, I call this How I Met Your Mother. Kind of like the TV sitcom, only it was at church, not in a bar. Okay? So, I want to start by reading a scripture, I believe, that goes along with this, and it's Romans 8.28. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with that scripture. And it says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. On a Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, I was off duty. I decided to go to youth group at Abundant Church. I was only 19 years old, still young enough to go to youth group, I think. So I talked one of my buddies into going with me, and went away we went in my new truck. When I got to church and went into the youth building, I noticed the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen singing in the youth band. And most of you can probably guess who that was, Wanda. Now, to be honest, my focus that night was not on God. It was on Wanda. <laughs> so after service, I wanted to talk to Wanda, but I was too shy. Okay, so as my buddy and I were leaving church in my truck, Wanda passed me in her mother's minivan. When she passed me, a kid in the back seat gave me the bird. So, you know, that didn't bother me too much. I figured it was just an honorary little kid being an honorary little kid. I thought about returning the favor, but I didn't. Okay, so the following Sunday, Wanda came up and apologized for her neighbor flipping me the bird. It turns out that Wanda would take the kids from her neighborhood. See, in El Paso, they have neighborhoods and blocks. She'd take the kids from her neighborhood to church on Wednesday nights, and they weren't sanctified. <laughs> so anyway, and you know what? I am thankful for the kid who gave me the bird because that's how I met Wanda, <laughs> and that is a true story. Uh, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love him and have been called to according to his purpose. Somebody gives you the bird at church, you might be meeting the love of your life. Just remember that. So, and as kind of a side note, I'd like to speak to those out here today who are teens, maybe young adults, or some people who are not maybe married or looking to get into a relationship. I want to tell you to pray. Juan and I, I'll let you in on a little secret, we're both praying for God to lead us to the right person when we met. God has someone special for each and every person. You need to trust him be and be patient, and he will lead you to that right person. Okay? So the next part of my testimony I'm going to call the turning point. The turning point. Now, before proceeding, I would like to talk a little bit about our church doctrine on the Holy Spirit. Our first experience of the Holy Spirit is when we are born again, and we call this initial sanctification of the Spirit. Titus 3.5 talks about the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In the Church of the Nazarene, we also believe in what we call the second crisis moment. Now, I do not like the word crisis because I relate the word crisis to tragedy. That's just what enters my mind. So I'm going to call it a second experience of the Holy Spirit we call entire sanctification. Entire sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, empowering us to be witnesses of Jesus Christ in this world and empowering us to fulfill the Great Commission. Acts 1.8 says, Paul, Paul says, but you will receive power, well not Paul, excuse me, Luke, in Acts 1.8, it says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
So keep this in mind as I proceed with my testimony. So now I've met Wanda. We're spending a lot of time together. I was looking forward to going to church and began to want more of God in my life. Later down the road on another Wednesday night, I attended the main service at Abundant Church and Pastor Charles Neiman taught on being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I knew this is what I needed in my life to draw closer to God. So I went forward and prayed to receive the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Now, this was a turning point for me. From that time on, I had a hunger for God in my life. I could feel his presence with me every day. I began to read the Bible and actually understand it and the scriptures. Now, prior to asking God for the power of the Holy Spirit, I read the Bible, but really never got much out of it. I was saved and believed in Jesus, but I did not have a hunger for God in my life. So a couple weeks later, after asking God to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, God also gifted me with the ability to pray in tongues. Now, I'll stop right there. Understand, I am not advocating speaking in tongues in the church of the Nazarene, not at all. But neither can I deny the experience that I had, and neither can I deny that tongues is even a part of my prayer life even today. Say, so maybe you're here today, and just like me, you believe in Jesus, but you have no hunger for God in your life. You just don't have that, that hunger for the Lord. If that's you, I want to recommend you simply do this. Ask God to fill you with his power and his spirit, and let the spirit of God do a work in your life. Okay, The Holy Spirit will give you the anointing and the hunger you need to live effectively for Jesus Christ, and there is nothing like it. Now, I'm not just wanting to say that because that's my experience. I want to back that up with Scripture. So I'm going to ask you guys to turn with me today to Luke chapter 11, verses 11 through 13. Verses 11 through 13. Luke chapter 11, verses 11 through 13. Now these are the words of Jesus. They are in red letters. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? To those who ask him. Seeking God. Uh, Scripture, the Bible says, ask, and you will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Okay? So, and what happens when we ask God for the Holy Spirit in our lives? Refer back to Acts chapter 8, 1. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in this world. Okay? So well, there you have it. I've arrived. I'm filled with God's Spirit, and I'm hungry for His Word. Time to do great things for Jesus, right? Woo! Wrong. Not hardly. Okay? So after I got out of the Army, I wanted to be a preacher. Juan and I moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma area, and I tried to enroll in Rama Bible School. Long story short, the finances were not there, and I could not attend Bible school. And I was kind of disappointed by this. But looking back, I realized that I was too young. I was 21 years old at the time, or 22. I was too young. I didn't have enough spiritual maturity and or life experience to minister to anyone. But God was not done with me yet. You see, when God's Spirit works in your life, He begins to show you things in your heart that you need to change. Okay, There were things in my life I didn't realize were displeasing to God until the Spirit revealed it to me. I had anger. I had bitterness. I had a bad attitude. I had wrong thinking. All these things God's Spirit revealed to me and helped me to overcome over the past 30 years. Okay? Uh, and God has replaced my shortcomings with the fruits of the Spirit, with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Thirty years of the Spirit working in my life and changing this hard heart. It's a long time. But God continually works in everyone's life and constantly reveals things that we need to change so we can be more like Him. Now, uh, I stand before you today, I'm 50 years old, 
And some of you who are older than I am probably think 50 is not that old. I think Charlie told me, well, 50 is not that old. Okay? <laughs> and some of you who are here that are younger than me probably think 50 is kind of old. Probably Silas and some of you younger folks think I'm an old man. So anyway, regardless of my old age or my young age, God has opened the doors for me to take ministry classes to the Nazarene District Training Center, which Pastor Bob leads. Thankful for that. Man, he's amazing. Great teacher. Okay. And uh, Friday night, uh, I, went, I mentioned earlier, we went to uh, District Assembly in Decatur, and I received my first district minister's license uh, at District Assembly Friday night. So I'm really happy about that. I had some of the people from church here with me. I think uh, Paula and Rob, or Paula, Rob and Sandy, Pastor Bob and Charlene. I think Hannah was there. So it was good to have them there. So in closing, this is my testimony. And I hope that something I said will help you in your journey of faith that, and that God will continue to his work in your life and in mine. So I want to close with the scripture. 1 Peter 3.15 Because I believe we all have a testimony. Uh, you know, some testimonies seem more powerful than others. You know, I just had a normal testimony of a guy who gave his life to Jesus and the Holy Spirit's worked in my life and developed me all these years. You know, I was never addicted to crack or drugs. And had to be delivered from alcohol. But this is my testimony. But I believe God has given each one of you a testimony, and it is your duty to share what God has done in your life with others. So I want to close with this scripture. 1 Peter 3.15. Take this off to read it. <laughs> but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for this church, Lord, and I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, just to draw us closer to you. Let your Holy Spirit work in our life, Father, and do a work so we can be more like you. Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to reach this community and that you'll help this church to grow and they will be a light on the hill like Chuck said earlier and that we can shine in this dark world, Father, and reach people for your kingdom. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Well, that's all I got, and thanks for coming today.